the paradox is only a conflict between reality and your feeling of what reality ought to be. This is a statement made by the famous physicist Richard P. Feynman. Truly, quantum mechanics is full of paradox that defies our common sense. One such paradox is that of quantum superposition. In this video, we would be looking deeply into superposition, thereby gaining a mathematical as well as an intuitive understanding about how it works. We would also look into some of the examples and how from classical bit system we move into quantum bit or qubit and how do we represent mathematically. Welcome to lesson number 12 of this series of videos on mathematics of quantum mechanics. My name is Shonak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. Welcome to lesson number 12 of this video. Well, first we would like to look today what are the topics that we are covering. So we are covering what is a single quantum system. We would understand what is a qubit. We will also go and recap orthogonal vectors and orthogonal projection because that is how the quantum system is later written into. From binary system to qubit, what is called a computational basis, what is quantum superposition and finally how quantum computer exploits the power of quantum superposition thereby exceeding abnormally in terms of speed of computation. First, we would look into one of the definition, what is a single quantum system and the qubit. Well, the state of individual quantum systems are described by unit vectors living in separate complex Hilbert spaces. Now, this is a kind of a definition or you might call it as a postulate of quantum mechanics and we are first going to look into this definition and understand deeply into it. Now, what do we mean by a quantum state? Now, see, a collection of all relevant physical properties, position, momentum, spin, polarization, is known as the quantum system. Now, it is a matter of fact, as a tool for physics, quantum states actually grew out of states in the classical mechanics. So, a classical uh, dynamical state consists of a set of dynamical variables with well-defined real values at each instant of time. For example, the state of a cannonball would consist of the position and velocity. The state values evolve under equations of motion and thus remain strictly determined. If we know the position of the cannon and the exit velocities of its projectiles, then we can use the equations obviously to calculate the force of gravity and predict the trajectory. Similarly, quantum systems actually consist of a set of dynamical variables that evolves under equation of motions, but these exist under complex numbers. So the complex numbers are quantized, limited by uncertainty relations and only provide what is called the probability distribution for the outcomes for a system. For example, the quantum system of an electron in a double slit experiment could consist complex values over the detection region and when squared only predict the probability distribution of electron counts across the detector. So when we're talking of a single quantum state or what is a quantum state, you can see it actually evolves out of a classical system. If you really want to know more about the state of a classical system, you can go back to my previous lectures in this series, uh, in the in the other series of quantum mechanics, where I have detailed uh, much more on the classical and quantum system and the difference between the two. Right, so first this is the now the time that we look into ad another definition which is called an exclusive state. So when modeling the state of a given physical quantity such as position, spin, polarization, two states are said to be exclusive if the fact of one of the states uh, with certainty implies that there are no chances whatsoever of being in other states. Let me give you a quick example. What do I mean by this uh, statement? Because this is very important. Let us imagine the hypothetical situation that we have three boxes, box one and box two and box three. And the whole system, uh, we have something which is called a single quantum system. So now the whole system behaves quantum mechanically. If I know that the particle is in box one, then obviously it won't be in box two and box three. 
So you can understand that two states are said to be exclusive with the fact of being in one certainly implies that the quantum particle is not into box 2 and box 3. However, this quantum particle we can take it in another place. Say for example, uh, this these are the three particles. Imagine that a particle can move in this way that is horizontally, it can move in this way that is diagonally and it can, moves into this way that is vertically. Now these three states are definitely uh, we can call not exclusive since moving diagonally can be thought of as moving vert horizontally and vertically at the same time. I mean to say the diagonal. Now if you have recounted to my earlier lectures, I would just like to go and explain you there is something which is called an orthogonal vector. A vector is orthogonal when their inner product is zero. Let me give you a quick example. So this is uh, orthogonal. Is it an orthogonal vector? Question is why? Yes, because once we find the dot product, we find it to be zero. Now this is the question of orthogonal vectors. Why I am talking about orthogonal vectors right now, it will soon become clear. Now there is, an, we take the same diagram. So yeah, plus i and minus i become zero. So we take the same diagram on the next part and we see there is something which is called an orthogonal projection. Now here you see that this projection vector P V W which is at our un subscript of V onto W this is one the V onto W gives the component of V along the direction of W since we define it as the component uh, along W P V and P V W is basically a scalar project it is a scalar number. Now what is the reason for telling all this? So considering these two definitions orthogonal vectors and orthogonal projection it actually makes sense to establish uh, I would say a connection between exclusive states and orthogonal vectors. So what we can tell from here that if you are given a quantum system with n exclusive states that means the states uh, which we have just thought uh, we have understood what is an exclusive state it is going up to n number. Each state will be represented by a vector from an orthonormal basis of an n-dimensional Hilbert space. Let me give you an example from the particles, say for example this one, this one or this one. So the three boxes actually shows that from the particle, uh, the state of the uh, electron can either be in box 1 or in box 2 or in box 3. And this can be represented as this box 1, this one box 2 and this one box 3. So you see that this actually states that each state represented is already orthonormal and the particle is either in box 1, either in box 2 or box 3. So this is how we represent the quantum state 1, 2 and 3. And from now on what we will be doing is that we will be using the term uh, word uh, vector and state interchangeably. So that would make uh, much more sense. So now that we have understood what is a single quantum state and how it is orthogonal and the particles how they are either here or here or here. Now it is a time that we should introduce the concept of qubit. Although it might sound a little bit abstract but I will make it very simple. Now qubits actually only have two distinct or exclusive states which is the starting point of everything which we need in quantum information. Now note that all mathematical statements we will discuss can be applied to any quantum system with any number of discrete physical states. But before we introduce, we would like to go back and understand the basic definition of what is a bit. In your cell phone or in your computer or pretty much I can say in any digital electronic device, the information is treated by using the simplest alphabet of all that is called the binary system. In binary we have only two letters 0 and 1. The basic unit of classical information is known as bit. Physically a bit is implemented by a transistor in a processor or on a tiny magnet or your hard drive. In a computer each bit is either in the state of 0 or in the state of 1. Just like the bit is the unit of a classical information, qubit is also the basic unit of what is called the quantum information. So I would like to demonstrate here is the computer. So the information are actually stored in bits and bytes. 
uh, all the data that you see on the right hand side from Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, the entire data is actually fundamentally stored in bits and bytes and each of this has some kind of a number hexadecimal and it goes from kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte and pentabyte. So what I'm trying to make a point is that bits actually comes in only two possible states. But qubits are something different. The value depends upon superposition of 0, 1. They can be in both states and they are in coherent superposition of each other. So this is uh, what is qubit all about. But we will come to the mathematical definition of qubit. But before that, let us look into how do we write the qubits in mathematical terms. So in quantum information, we are using quantum bits. Like a classical uh, bit, qubit has or two exclusive states that is quantum 0 and quantum 1. The qubit actually uh, I would say behaves according to the laws of quantum mechanics that is uh, quite uh, quite uh, uh, normal. Since a qubit has two different exclusive states the state or vector representing the quantum 0 and quantum state is written as this. It is obviously two dimension dimensional. So the vector 0 this is actually known as computational basis. So the vector 0 and 1 are actually represented by this. So this one and this one, this is quantum 0 and this is for quantum 1. Now we, we know that how this uh, qubits are actually denoted. Now it is the time to see that if we can allow, uh, if we can use this quantum bit or this superposition principle in uh, in the electrons. So here here you see this is a schematic diagram, and if I take this part, that is the electron has got the uh, I would say energy level. If we use the energy of an electron in an atoms as a quantum bit, we would only say that the ground state, this one, the electron which has got the lowest energy is our quantum zero and we can write it as something like this. And the excited state that is this one, the higher energy is quantum one and this is how we write as one. Since the ground and excited states are mutually exclusive, we represent by this. So this is how we write. Now, something very uh, interesting will come up. Let us define the state plus and minus with the vectors like this. Don't worry about the 1 by square root 2 term. You can just ignore for the time being. What we find most interestingly is that if you look into this part, then the above, uh, I would say, statement actually states that this is this uh, I'm going to say plus minus this ket sign is basically a linear combination of the qu computational basis of quantum 0 and quantum 1. In quantum mechanics we call this as quantum superposition which we will define later. So what do we mean by that the, is the system is both in 0 and 1? The answer is a big yes and that is basically one of the most counterintuitive and an astounding fact of quantum mechanics. We can do certainly that in lab and we will experience it first and, and this is what is called the trigger, mathematical trickery or we can say one of the most important and interesting thing of quantum superposition. We will also see how this quantum superposition can be used. So quantum superposition as I uh, was explaining is a fundamental principle of quant quantum mechanics. A particle can be placed at two places. Classically we cannot do that because in classical mechanics things are well defined. The nature of the system is guided by deterministic mode and the outcome is either 0 1. So in quantum state this is 0 1 right and it is and but in a classical state this is zero or one that means it has to go from one place to another so what happens is that if you remember the famous schrodinger's cat uh, which is simultaneously alive and dead so that gives us an understanding now why it is called as alive as well as dead so the quantum state actually exists in both the places and that is what is called superposition now question is that this superposition is it useful for quantum computers let us see in the next part of our video so we have taken 0 1 as usual classical and computer and these combinations 0 0 0 1 1 0 what happens is that they pr the classical computer processes one at a time that means first it will open one door then the second, then the third and fourth. And if you have got a visitor standing in, you have to take time and patiently wait until one by one all the doors are open. 
quantum computer will also take the same combination nothing uh, extra but it will process the data all at a time that means it will give this many uh, i would say if it is three then it will give one two three four five six seven eight eight possible computations and eight possible ways of uh, simultaneously accessing the data so instead of knocking the door one two three four it will open all the four doors at once and you can find your visitor so this is how it will process the data at a time so if you get four then you get this many so how many you can count one two three four 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 31, 16. So 16 uh, processes will be done simultaneously and you can imagine that is how quickly the information will be processed. So 2 to the power 64 gives this amount of possibilities which is used 1 million terabytes and if I take a general clock speed of a computer which is 2 gigahertz it will take 400 years to compute and 2 to the power 53 qubits will give this many of possibilities and recently Google has launched Psychomore processor which will process 2 to the power 53 qubits this amount of possibilities in 3 minutes 20 seconds which will otherwise take a supercomputer 10,000 years to work and Einstein's action spooky action at a distance is now a reality and possibly we will see computer supercomputer and then now we will see um, quantum computer and we will be working in maybe in near future into our computer desk or on our table but it has got a huge amount of expense the storage capacity is extremely almost at uh, a minus 453 degree Kelvin or something like that I really don't remember there are limitations so this is how now we explained that how a single state quantum state and the qubit and then from there to uh, superposition how it can be used in explaining further of uh, the power of quantum computing so you see that quantum superposition uh, principle if a quantum states can be in the state 0 and it also can be in the state 1 then quantum mechanics actually allows out to be in an arbitrary set so you see this nice equation we say this psi is actually in a superposition of 0 and 1 and this one a and b are basically called probability amplitudes finally we come to this the state 0 is a superposition of plus and minus since this is how the equation happens so that is all for today's video i have explained to you with examples explored the power of superposition and how do we write mathematically in a superposition in the next video we will deal with something very important that is quantum measurement we will start with max bond's rule wave collapse parabolism and quantum operations all them all of them through simple examples and writing it mathematically because we are dealing with the mathematics of quantum mechanics. Thank you very much for those who have watched my video. I would sincerely request you to support me and subscribe to my channel Physics for Students. Click on the bell icon to get all the notification and you can contact me at this email ID and subscribe to my other channel and you can follow me on my Instagram, Facebook and LinkedIn pages. Thank you very much. Physics for Students will continue the mathematics for quantum mechanics in near future because we have a lot to cover keep watching keep subscribing keep commenting and please support me on growing my channel thank you very much for watching and keep supporting me and keep well and be happy